back, you socialist commies! I'm the destruction of America! You are the problem with America! You are the scum of America! Shame on you! Shame on you! You want to be the case! Shame on you! Abortion is wrong! Smoking weed is wrong! And uh, welcome to this edition of Wake and Bake News, to, uh, this Tuesday, the 26th of July. And how are you on this morning? I'm feeling pretty good. I'm pretty happy right now. Uh, I think the Democratic Party did a pretty good job in making me a little bit happy yesterday. Uh, and, of course, the Trump campaign managed to piss me off again. So, you know, good news for the Democrats. So uh, the, uh, you saw the video that I showed of the Trump supporter basically telling all the marijuana supporters that they were going to go to hell. My favorite part is when he produced the bullhorn out of nowhere. <laughs> you know, I mean, I went and commented in his video that Jesus didn't need a bullhorn because he wasn't an asshole. People actually listen to him. People that are assholes need bullhorns. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was really funny, but I have uh, kind of some some video to share with you this morning, and uh, the first one I'm going to share with you is uh, Tennessee uh, Democrat Steve Cohen and his discussion about how things have been going so far, and then I'll show some of the protests and some other um, you know political commentary about what's been going on, but so far I'm seeing a lot of good support for marijuana, very happy. So I'm going to show you a, a series of little video snippets from what's been going on at the convention. Personally, he has tweeted uh, that now is the time to rally behind uh, Hillary. He has officially endorsed her. Is there anything that can be done or is this horse out of the barn? I think it's out of the barn and I think it's a lot of people that are angry at the system and it's rage against the system, rage against the machine. Yeah. And they're very angry and uh, that's what Trump has shown. That's what Bernie showed. These people are very angry, and Hillary is a representative to them of the system. Uh, she's a good part of the system in terms of her values, in terms of the type of people she would appoint to, to administrative positions, cabinet member positions, regulatory positions, and those are really important spots where you make policy, whether it's the FCC, whether it's Federal Trade Commission, whether it's food and drug, and I think she'll appoint good people. Uh, will it be necessarily revolutionary? No. But change is generally evolutionary. And I just, I, Trump is, is, is a disaster if, if he would be president. It would just be a disaster. And I'm afraid that uh, the foreign policy would be shot. I'm afraid the Baltic countries could be in danger. Um, I think there are other spots. I think, I think what will happen in the Middle East would be, would be awful. Because I think he would, he would do, take actions like George Bush did going into to Iraq, which really gave rise to ISIS. And the, uh, and he, has, he has been against. I mean, that, that's been that's been part of his departure from the Republican orthodoxy is attacking the Iraq war and, and interventionist. He, he was against it, I think, before he was for it. And then he was again against it. Uh, yeah, I think uh, he was he was for it on the Howard Stern show. Right. Uh, and right. then he was against it later. So, so yeah. let me interrupt here for a second. We have your uh, colleague of yours, Luis Gutierrez of uh, 
of Illinois, Chicago. of Chicago. Um, uh, he's talking about immigration. He's been at the forefront of this issue. The people, including those that are outside protesting, that say a lot of this, this uh, rancor and acrimony comes from what uh, happened over the weekend with the WikiLeaks stuff, and specifically, uh, you know, uh, the Democratic National Committee responding with Debbie Wasserman Schultz leaving her post. How much of this is a self-inflicted wound for the Democrats? I think it was going to happen anyway. I think this, this certainly hurt. Which, which part? The, I, I think the, the Bernie people's acrimony toward Hillary. Uh -huh. But I think this certainly hurt. It fed into the in, into the to the storyline, and, and in such a pot way because they've been saying it was a rigged system. Yeah. And and it does seem that it was it was done that way. It bothers me greatly. Uh, I was elected for the first time in 1976, and I've been in office all but two years of my life. When I ran for the Tennessee State Senate in 1982, the local party was against me. I won, but they tried to rig the system against me. When I ran for Congress in 96 and I lost to Harold Ford Jr., the local party was against me, and I lost. I've had the local party against me, and, and, and I've had situations with the state party also. Uh, so it, it pains me to see the party get involved because I've been the victim of it. And to see religion used, Bernie Sanders being Jewish or even being agnostic or atheist, that has no business in any kind of government and uh, politics, but certainly not the Democratic Party. And I've had religion used against me. So I, it pained me to see what they did. I think all those people should be uh, reprimanded or, or terminated. And do, do, like you, you talk about ha having had the same experience. Did you come close? I mean, did, because of the sort of kindred spirit with Bernie Sanders, did you, was it a hard decision for you initially to who to endorse? Not initially. I mean, Bernie and I sponsored some bills together uh, on the environment and on solar energy, and we've had some other bills on, on voting and, and, and different issues. But I've known Bill Clinton for 35 years, maybe. Uh, I committed to, to Bill and Hillary a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, quickly, before we, uh, before we say goodbye, Congressman, uh, one of your big issues uh, is marijuana and legalization, decriminalization. Do you think this convention is going to talk about it at all? It's in the platform, which is a good thing. It's the first time it's been in the Democratic platform to have it scheduled too, where the government can research it uh, and determine what medical benefits it has and people can have a better knowledge of the medicinal benefits. And I think there are many, and I see it with friends of mine who've had cancer and suffered from nausea, from treatment, from chemotherapy. I've had people tell me it helps them with pain. I've had veterans tell me it helps them with PTSD. I've had Montel Williams tell me it helps him, and I'm, you know, and, I, and Montel's a friend. And so, uh, uh, John Dingle, probably. But, I, but nobody should go to jail for it, and nobody should not be able to get a job for it and not have government housing or scholarships. So I've been working on it, and I've talked to the president, and I talked to John Podesta today and others. So it's in the platform in a better space. It's not as good as it should be. And I do have friends that are for Bernie who will vote for Gary Johnson or Jill Stein because they have better positions on marijuana. But the bottom line is anything that's going to happen on marijuana is going to come through Congress and it's going to come through Democratic legislators. We have Dana Rohrbach, a Republican who's been an advocate for marijuana reform. And there are a couple others, but not too many. It's going to be the Democrats like Earl Blumenauer and Jared Polis and myself uh, that are going to be the leaders on this. And we'll work with Hillary and get whatever we can get done. And to vote for Gary Johnson is throwing away a vote to a Republican. And to vote for Jill Stein, she's a nice lady, but they all need to come around and vote. But anyway, it's, it's not the same convention as it used to be. I got my buttons now. I'm just not as fired up as I used to be. And uh, we'll see what happens. But I think the oratory is going to be great. Elizabeth Warren will be great. Bernie should be great. Well, certainly so. And in, in fact, now we are looking at Jason and Jaron Collins. Of course, Jason was the first openly gay NBA player a few years ago that are speaking now. And never average in double figures. Yeah. <laughs> Who would think a guy would never average in double figures and he'd make prime time? Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you got to get on the radar one way or another. Well, you know, just, just sexual orientation did much better for him than, than rebounds and points. Rebounds and putbacks, huh? <laughs> That's right. And he said, boys, I'm not turning. I'm headed for a land that's far away beside the crystal fountains. So come with me, we'll go and see the big rock candy mountains. In the big rock candy mountains, there's a land that's fair and bright where the handouts grow on bushes and you sleep out every night. 
Election Day, got five states voting to legalize marijuana. We got one to three states voting on medical. We got to win as much as we can. We're at the DNC for a welcome reception with Drug Policy Action and the American Trade Association for Cannabis and Hemp. And together we are uh, gathered here uh, to talk about the uh, legitimization of uh, the industry and uh, talk about all the great things that are going on around the country. And our interest in legalizing marijuana, a lot of you are here to make money from it, and God bless you, and they, uh, you know, be all good. But what I tell you is for us, it's been about ending the horrors of the war on drugs. He's live at Broad and Packer Avenues tonight where the protests continue as the convention gets underway. Walter. Hey, Rick, we'll give you a live look right now here at Broad and Packer, as you mentioned, as you'd imagine. Hundreds of protesters made their way through Philadelphia today, representing a myriad of policy demands. Some carrying a 50-foot inflatable marijuana cigarette demanded the decriminalization of pot. We want marijuana to be removed from the Controlled Substances Act and treated just like alcohol and tobacco. That's all we're asking for. The Democrats' convention is lit. Demonstrators smoked weed at Philadelphia's City Hall to push for legalization. And they marched with two 50-foot joints. This year, the Democrats' platform actually includes language supporting a pathway to marijuana legalization. It also calls for downgrading marijuana in the Controlled Substances Act. So pretty good, huh? I thought so. I was like, yeah, that makes me pretty happy. They actually voted for this to be in um, the Democratic platform. So this is now part of the Democratic platform. I've read that some of the supporters for uh, the end of prohibition uh, have actually said that the Democrats are doing the, the real legwork on this, that they're not just talking the talk, but walking the walk. So we'll see. You know, I don't expect Hillary Clinton to actually grandma Clinton to actually say anything worthwhile about this. But like um, uh, the other uh, senator from Tennessee was saying, Cohen, that uh, we'll work with her. And if she wants things from us, then, you know, she's going to have to do stuff. And what, another story I read, which I kind of thought was the election plate going around in church. I felt like suddenly I was in church and they're bringing around the election plate. Everyone make a contribution, you know, to our good works. Anyway, that one of the things they were saying is that if you can afford to buy a $100 bag of weed, which obviously I don't necessarily can <laughs> all the time, but if you can afford that, then you can afford to uh, donate $27 to her campaign to beat Donald Trump. Now, I think after the beginning, seeing the Donald Trump supporter wearing the Make America Great Again, or at least Make America Loud and Obnoxious, I'm not sure, uh, with the bullhorn, you could see <laughs> that the guy is just going to scream crazy shit about how you're going to burn in hell. And that's so useful and helpful right now at this point. I mean, that's obviously got to be in the platform somewhere. So, I mean, yes, that's an extreme of his party. But the, the fact is that any religious right that's going to be left in the Democratic Party is going to believe all this nonsense bullshit about marijuana being dangerous. Even though I also read another story that said that more Republicans than ever before, more Republicans believe now that marijuana is perfectly fine and should be deregulated than there are in the Republican Party that believe like that crazy motherfucker. And Donald Trump accepted it, but... They did not accept it in their platform. As a matter of fact, they're hell bent just like that crazy, you know, Jesus guy. To and by the way, I don't think Jesus really likes him. <laughs> you know, bullhorn. Did Jesus need a bullhorn? Did Jesus take like a fucking parchment paper, curl it up, and go, "Everyone, I have something to say"? No, he didn't fucking do that because the shit he said actually fucking counted for something and wasn't just me screaming in the wind through a a cone. You know, what an idiot. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, there's still that very strong control in the, in the GOP, and I can see a lot of their members' frustration that still believes that marijuana is, you know, the devil and must be absolutely stopped. And, oh my God, fear and loathing, fear and loathing. And that's pretty much what they've got so far. So, and, and things that I'm reading here in California are still going very well, um, even though L.A. 
apparently has now rejected its plan to use marijuana taxes to help the homeless. And there's a couple of reasons. Number one reason is because the charities that would have received that money or would have been in competition with other charities that would have received that money complained, right? Because this is their cash cow. They take advantage of poor, misbegotten people. How do you think they drum up, you know, uh, more Christians, right? In order to get the food and the help that these organizations offer, which is very sweet, you have to sit through their fucking sermon. You have to fucking listen to their religious spiel because they're doing this as a, as a hook so they could get you addicted to this religion thing and shoot Jesus instead of heroin or whatever. But it's basically, they were pissed off because they didn't like the idea of marijuana money coming in and actually making a difference, right? And then there were uh, people, rich assholes in LA who don't like the idea that maybe they could actually make a difference for the homeless and that would attract more homeless into their area. Yeah. People in Los Angeles are extremely shel you know, shellfish. Uh, a lot of us along the coast, small towns along the coast, hate LA, hate the influence of LA, love the fact that we live this far away from LA. I live about 200 miles. And like, we're thrilled. Keep it the fuck over there because you're a bunch of stuck up, selfish. I mean, it's fucking Rome down there, man. I'm surprised they're not eating and selling homeless people. I'm surprised that homeless people on a stick down there or throwing them into like fucking, uh, you know, ovens or something because the LA is one of the scummiest places on earth. Ventura is also pretty scummy about the way they treat the homeless. We actually just had the church get up and leave here because they're like, well, we're not getting any help on this homeless thing at all. And a rich guy who wants to sell alcohol in the park basically wants to take over the city park. And he's using the homeless as an excuse to get his hands on our public property so he can basically have it as a giant beer corral on the weekends or Cinco de Mayo or something and make a little cash. Everybody is a fucking scum. I mean, seriously. But we try to keep that stinking shit from L.A. down the fuck down that way and keep it the fuck away from us. Yeah. There was a time when I was thrilled to hear uh, L.A. television news, like KTLA, mention Ventura County's weather. Now it's like, stay the fuck away from my town, you filthy pigs. God, you guys are so fucking selfish and idiotic. Now, some people felt that this would raise taxes for poor medical patients. And I'm like, but if you give poor medical patients a break on those taxes, then you're helping poor medical patients and the homeless. And some of those poor homeless people are going to be medical patients. And that was another thing they didn't like. They didn't want this to attract more homeless people to L.A., because now they're selling marijuana and using it to help the homeless. Oh, Jesus, God, what, what if L.A. actually solved the homeless problem? Oh, we can't have none of that. So the very bitch that tried to use this to hurt legalization went, uh, 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 because she didn't expect the reaction of, no, we actually want to help the homeless. We're nice people. We're not selfish. You are. You are. So if you're going to come over here and go, but it'll cost you more money, you'll be surprised how many stoners will go, I know that. I know. And that'll fix itself later on. I'm not really particularly worried about that right now. Costs will drop, right? It has everywhere else that marijuana has been legalized. So telling me that the taxes are somehow, I'm not being able to smoke weed right now. I can't afford weed right now. So you're kidding, right? Maybe if I had the access to be able to purchase, you know, medical marijuana on a regular basis from my dispensary without it being such a budgetary pinch, and, you know, because I'm also paying for teeth, you know, and stuff like that, then maybe you'd have an argument, but you basically don't because I don't, I'm not getting dispensary weed anyway. It's banned in my town. It's expensive. I can't afford it all the time. I'm having to supplement with shitty plants I'm growing. So whatever it is you think you're saying already exists. 
the only thing worse than this is prohibition and I went that through that too so yeah I don't know man it's kind of weird to watch rich people threaten poor people with hey you might be poor <laughs> I already am I'm sorry was that supposed to be a deterrent <laughs> sweetheart what's new about that come on I put some of this keef on top. Oh, it's tasting so much better. Not so, you know, chlorophylly and blah, blah, blah. Plus, this is the indica, and I like the indica much better than the sativa I have growing right now. Out of the two, the sativa really is like a cup of coffee. It makes me just, like, now I have to get up. I have to clean. You see me cleaning? That's the sativa. I saw uh, one of the guys on the cannabis show. They did a great show about California uh, legalization and some of the things going on here. But uh, they they had a, their last show. He was talking about how he got a bunch of gardening done. And oh yeah, if you've got a really energetic sativa, you'll get. You just can't help it. You're like almost paranoid. I have to go clean something. Something must be dirty here that I need to deal with. This is making me. I don't like this. It's making me uptight. I have to make it fix it. Fix it. You know. So that paranoia kind of plays into making you want to actually go and do things. Uh, other than that, I was just going to leave this with uh, so far so good with the Democratic Party. But we have yet to see Hillary Clinton, the beast, come forth from the cavern. And I agree that, and these are some damn good arguments. And, and Bernie Sanders made one last night, and I'm not somebody who supported Bernie Sanders. But boy, I watched his speech last night, and I saw those kids crying. And you know what I thought? Holy shit, this is like Kennedy. Holy shit, this is like Kennedy. These kids are crushed. This is the, the candidate of their youth. This is going to mark the party for 30 years. This moment is like McGovern. It's big. I'm not sure that the party understands it. But those kids crying, wow, that was intense. You know, that was really intense. Anyway, he said last night that... Uh, not voting is surrendering to Donald Trump. And I'm like, okay, that's a good argument. Really, the only reason I would uh, elect Donald Trump is because he's going to destroy the country. He's going to destroy the government. He's going to destroy our support across the world. He's going to destroy any sort of semblance of society we have here because everything he stood for. I mean, he, he's been so successful at generating hate that now David Duke, who's like a former KKK leader, is running for a governmental op, uh, you know, office because he's been emboldened by this behavior of Donald Trump's like, it's okay, come on out, racist, we're just going to be just straight up racist now. And even uh, the guy that got kicked off Fox News, who was running it recently, um, I can't remember his fat jab of the hut name, anyway... He got kicked off. I almost suspect he got kicked off because he's been helping Donald Trump. And I think that maybe, because if you really think about it, Megyn Kelly's sexual lawsuit was a little while ago. And why didn't those girls jump in then? Why now during the campaign? So what I'm thinking is that this has been like, you know, they've been building up the groundwork for this. And part of the reason that they were able to move him is because he's been working with Donald Trump. And this frees him up to be an advisor to Donald Trump and not have this be a conflict of interest. Because I think he's literally becoming a, an advisor to Donald Trump. And Donald Trump has admitted that too. So Donald Trump basically has someone who's a sexual deviant being his advisor, which seems perfectly appropriate because Donald Trump seems like a wannabe Bill Cosby rapist guy to me, you know, wants to have sex with, I wonder what he's been up to. You know, because he seems like a sexual deviant to me, you know. He just seems like he's so, it's narcissistic sexuality. It's about having control of people. Like, you could just see him keeping a woman in a house on a dog leash, naked, for years. Like that one dude, you know, keeping them as pets. You could just see Donald Trump doing that. He seems very creepazoid <laughs> and all the women around him are so much like the women that that guy that J roger ailes that's his name that was in charge of fox news thank you whoever said that in my head <laughs> roger ailes okay 
he he you know it seems like there's some kind of brotherhood of sexual childishness and deviancy there they all like the blonde big booby girls i feel sorry for the blondes i really do is this what you guys go through you have these creepy job of the huts try to keep you as a pet like a cat how disgusting oh i would definitely wash my mouth out every time that thing came near me it would just if i had to kiss that i think i would oh i'd rather put a gun in my mouth so gross either job of the hut fucking from Fox News or Donald Trump, either one is a slobbering, fucking sweating, fucking giant, fat, poured, filthy, bleh. <laughs> Gentlemen, you are hags. Seriously. It, you, you should be dressed in witch's clothes around like a, a cauldron going, boil and bubble, toil and trouble. <laughs> Sharing it on. Because you're that fucking ugly, man. Seriously, you are fucking ugly hags. If this was the Middle Ages and you wandered into a village, they'd burn you as a fucking warlock because you're so fucking ugly and scary. Seriously. Lose some weight, fat ass. You know? Lay off the stakes, Trump. Fucking fat fucking... <laughs> you ain't gonna see this guy run a quarter mile. You ain't gonna see him like Bill Clinton jogging. Fat fucking piece of shit. I ain't gonna elect a fucking president cholesterol. Get out of here. I would say Hillary Clinton has at least made some sort of effort about her appearance while Donald, well, because she had to, while Donald Trump is a fucking, bleh, a creature from the sea that washed up on shore of the deep. <laughs> The dude is a fucking disgusting somebody said he was holding up his hand in a picture and somebody said look at those fingers they're like shrimp <laughs> they're, like, they're like you know <laughs> that was the funniest thing I ever I was like yes that is not a hand I would ever let touch a breast I'm sorry and if he thinks that because pretty ladies let him touch their boobs, no, sweetheart, you're an evil king, like in fucking, you know, like, uh, what is this, uh, Game of Thrones or something, Lord of the Rings. That too, all right? Of course they're letting you. Do they have a choice? I bet if they had a choice, they'd stab the shit out of you like them blonde stabbed the fuck out of Roger Ailes. Yeah, stabbed the fuck out of him, boy, right in the hallway. It was the Ides of March for that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> that was great that was great boy that was as good as watching Caligula get it from the fucking Praetorian guard and, put, and then put Claudius in his place oh who's this guy hiding behind the curtain I think that that's Caligula's cousin Claudius well he's good enough he can be emperor <laughs> I think Claudius will go oh, shit that was great that was great Oh, that's not going to turn out well for Fox News at all. That's awesome. All right. Well, anyway, so I'll, I'll let you go for this episode. I thought that was a lot to digest all these different videos, and then I'll put links to where I got them and everything. And uh, we'll see what tomorrow brings and how things go on. But so far, what I've seen is that the best that they come, come up with is emergency room visits by children in states that have medical marijuana, which is probably another one of these numbers that's going to turn out to be weird, sketchy, unreliable, some sort of a way that they use percentages and fucking statistics to scare the fuck out of you. Even the cannabis was saying that. You know, that, you know how they do this stuff. It's like, oh my God, nine out of 10 doctors recommend. Nine out of 10 doctors is not a sample that makes any kind of real sense in the real world. If you asked a uh, hundred doctors, a thousand doctors, and told me 90% of those said, I would begin to listen to you, but nine out of 10 doesn't represent jack diddly squat. And most of them are actors anyway. If you go to any governmental site, most of the time, the images of doctors or nurses that they show you are usually actors with a clipboard. I'm a nurse. Hello. <laughs> this is the government. You know, they don't even like use real doctors or nurses because they have to have some kind of a image that's not like specific 
but yet gives you the feeling that these people are caring for you. So they use an actor, which does the exact opposite, in my opinion. <laughs> when she's too beautiful. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> she doesn't look like she has kids screaming at home. She's not a real nurse. <laughs> Hi. I'm here to check your chart, you know. You've seen those images, there's always, or like a doctor, like with the stethoscope. Oh, it's like hanging around his neck. He's usually got a little gray in the temples, and he's got like a clipboard. and it, You know, they, they got these generic images, or somebody creates one for all these websites. That does not hit me with confidence. Okay, so I'll let you go. And uh, uh, you stay high and goodbye, and we'll see what happens tomorrow. So far, the DNC has begun to calm me down, but seriously... And getting rid of Deborah, Debbie Washman Schultz helps. She did become Hillary's, you know, what do you call it? Uh, like a symbolic campaign, something advisor or some shit like that. In other words, she parked her in a chair and she gave her some money. It's usually what happens in organizations. You can't get rid of the scum. But you have to promote them away from trouble. Like, we're going to put you in an office far away. <laughs> we're going to... Shut the door, and you're going to stay there. It's kind of like the red-headed league with the Sherlock Holmes. Here, sit in this office and copy a dictionary. There you go. <laughs> it's kind of I think, probably what happened to her. Because you can't break those loyalties that you have with your political, you know, flunkies basically but uh you you can punish them by putting them in a chair with a dunce hat and i think that's what, what happened to debbie washerman schultz and she deserved it because we lost more democratic members of congress under her watch than before and she was against marijuana legalization and she thinks marijuana is an incredibly dangerous drug and these are just she's all i guess she's got something to do with uh the the payday loan system, which is like, I think she wants to deregulate it so it's easier for these people to take advantage of poor people because the payday loan check system only gives you a short-term help, but takes the possibility of putting you into debt, which they'd love to do. Everybody would love. You know what credit card companies hate the most? When you actually pay them off. They don't want you to fucking pay them off and they don't want you to pay in the full amount. They want you to keep paying interest and pay for three years or whatever longer than you should need to pay. They, they want you to be, to get into debt. You know, that's their, their gamble that you're not going to go into such so much debt that you just bail out on them, you know? All right. So we'll see what happens tomorrow and hopefully everything continues to be positive. And I would like to see a real sit down talk with Hillary Clinton about legalization that is not, some sort of a sidestep dance, which I mean, I understand because she's running for president, but I'm not happy with the bitch. And, and seriously, that kind of thing is only going to get her hurt right now. She needs to find a positive way <laughs> that does not give her a black eye amongst cons more conservative Democrats that are fucking snob asshole fucking old people. All right. Snob asshole old people. You fucking heard me. Okay, so <laughs> snob asshole elitist fucking old people with fucking educations who think they're better than everybody else and a mere stoner is a bunch of ignorant, you know, and they never get out to vote. You know, those people need, someone needs to shut their fucking old ass the fuck up, seriously. They're dicks, you know. So I don't want to hear none of that talk. So hopefully she will be able to make those asshole fucking dickheads in the party happy. And a lot of those dickheads are elitist fucking at the top of the DNC that caused a lot of the mess that we're seeing now. Because they're sh fucking shitheads. There's a lot of work still needs to be done in the DNC. Bernie Sanders is absolutely right. Revolution's not even over with. As a matter of fact, I'm right here to help you now. Because now I've seen a little bit under the curtain and I don't like what I'm seeing. Not helping anybody that's planning to stab my family in the back later on. And that's what I feel like. Oh, as soon as your kids are, and you're, and you're too old. <laughs> you know, fuck you. No. Do you realize that most people are not going to have jobs in the future? 
there's not going to be bus drivers, cab drivers, delivery drivers. Entire industries will collapse. Entire family groups will be out of jobs. It's already started to happen. And they keep telling us the economy's picking up or that our feelings are not correct. This is not a feeling. This is a personal experience. The majority of males that I know are out of work. They're not crippled. They're not stupid. They're not incapable. They want a job. There are no jobs here. This town's becoming a dead end. And it's happening all over the country. This is one of the nicest, most expensive places to live in the country. Ventura, city proper Ventura County. But it's a dead end if you don't have a college degree. And even if you do have a college degree, it still may be a dead end. What are you going to do about those kids? Send them into a gas chamber? What exactly is the DNC's plan? Because at some point, you're going to have to accept that there has to be some sort of guaranteed income. Otherwise, you're going to have to find a way to kill all these people off, or you just are going to watch them all slowly die, starve to death, their families deteriorate, their health. I want to know what the DNC is going to do. And I don't want to hear about feels, what I see, what is happening in my own personal family is what is concerning me. What happened to the opportunities? They all pissed away. They're gone. There's nothing left. Pretty soon when you go to the store, my brother described it like this. He's absolutely right. When my family came out of the woods in, during World War II, then, after the war, went into factories and began to have more children, grandchildren, to go into factories, did not realize that their productivity was so amazing that it would transport us to this moment in time with technology. But it meant that their grandkids that they were pumping up the world with to work in factories were not going to be needed. Now, when the technology took over back in those days, and my grandfather was screaming about it, and how it was union breaking and, you know, it hurt American workers and all this kind of stuff before all the disaster that we saw happening over the last 30 years. You did not see automation take over because it was at your father's job. Today, Americans will see in their face automation take over. It's already started the grocery stores with the self-serve line. Soon you will go to a store or somewhere and there will not be a human there like there is not a human on the end of the phone anymore they're just machines talking to other machines their machine calls my machine my machine takes a message but no humans are involved anymore what is the government going to do about this send out a plague armies to kill us all what's your plan because it's coming they're absolutely right. Those kids are absolutely dead right. If you don't fucking listen to Bernie Sanders and the progressives, things are going to get horrific. The Republicans have literally no answer for this except screaming Jesus Christ and Mexicans and all kinds of other crazy fucking Neanderthal noises that come out of their mouth. Sorry, I meant to let you go. <laughs> all right, so I'll let you go. It's a lot to chew, but uh, yeah, I, I see that Hillary Clinton is the only choice, but I'm not going to let go of her throat. She needs to understand, this is what I was sharing with my brother, as much as you don't want Donald Trump to not win, never let go of her throat and always let her know that she could be ended very quickly. And you, you, she's not going to be able to somehow cut a deal with us that will taint our souls so that we will not slash her throat if she fucks with us. It will happen. And it'll happen so fast. Just like how we found out who your vice president was on a Friday. They were like, oh, we knew it would be okay because of the internet. Translation. Oh shit, they found out because of the internet. We forgot the internet. Never forget the internet. 
So she better not play it because this is a different fucking kind of game. This is not the 80s. This is not Bill Clinton's Democratic Party. We will fucking, this is a mosh pit. This is now a mosh pit. And we're throwing elbows and it's fun. We're having a ball. We're enjoying ourselves. We're frustrated. Be happy we're not throwing these elbows on you. You know, this is more of a dance of joy and frustration, but it could turn ugly in a second if you do the wrong fucking thing. You know? All right, so I'll let you go. Adios. <laughs>